Valentino giving Yafu Fula was interviewed the night of the shooting. Yafu Fula gave a statement. People say we never interviewed him. He was interviewed. And the big thing is everybody says that he said he could identify the shooter. No, he did not. He never said that to us. He said he might be able to identify the driver. That is what he said. And we tried to reach out to re-interview Yafu Fula. Well, next thing you know, we're getting notification from, I think it's in Orange, New Jersey, if I remember right, that he's been murdered in a housing project or something like that over some drugs. Finally, yeah. and even to tell my story about Gaddafi, for example, because when you look at the internet, most people only know the story that his mother is pushing, mm -hmm. in which I don't blame her. You know what I mean? Like you would never, no one can ever, even in my book, no one will ever hear me speaking bad about Yasmin. Um, no one will find anything on the internet of me speaking bad about that lady because she always been good to me. That's the mother of Gaddafi. He's a friend of mine. You know what I mean? She always been like an aunt. Of course, um, what happened to her son? No one. Myself, I can't imagine what she's going through even now, 20 years later. That was her only child. Mm -hmm. But I was able to be able to tell my side that most don't know. So I was able to touch up on that in the book. Surrounded me again. They surrounded me. Oh, what's up with you, all of this? And death row, we here to die. You don't know death row. They had razors in their hands, everything. They said we so here to die? These, well, I guess the, they said we here to die? Um, Gaddafi, the one with the dread, oh, the braids <laughs> yeah, going yeah. back, the light skin uh, dude. Oh, yeah, rest in peace, rest Gaddafi. In peace. Yeah. He said that. He said, I'm death row. I'm here to die, boy. I said, That's boy. hard. Mm -hmm. That was when it got scary a little bit. That was the first time my heart was. You was like, oh, this, this I ain't. I said, this is this serious. Is real. <laughs> Downloads, we beat the Don Wands of this Russia. I'm from NEW Jersey with plenty murders occurred. Other leads also run dry. After speaking with officers on the scene, the police's main witness, Yafu Fula, had said he would give a full statement to detectives. But promises to meet with the police are never kept. And two months later, Fula is shot in the back of the head. Yafu Fula's murder is the most troubling because it happened so quickly, and he was the best witness. Without having any witnesses or anyone being able to identify the suspect, it's essentially impossible to solve this thing. <laughs> Keenan has the story. He was a rapper who toured with Tupac Shakur. 19-year-old Yafeu Fula was shot in the head early Sunday morning on the third floor of the housing project where he was visiting his girlfriend. She found him slumped on the hallway floor, said he'd made a joke as he answered the door. He said, yeah, what if there's someone coming to kill me? And he said, we all started laughing, like, just get the door. And then he came and opened and he came to the door. And then you heard the gunshot. Mm -hmm. Late today, police were holding two juveniles in connection with the murder. And on the streets of Montclair, where the young rapper grew up, friends listened to his music and angrily objected to reports Bula's death was in some way connected to the fact he'd been part of Tupac Shakur's entourage the night he was gunned down two months ago in Las Vegas. People have that rap this and you know what I'm saying? Witness the Tupac's murder, they ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, he just fell a victim to the streets. This Essex County, it ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. It's just sad that he had to go at 19. Well, I actually had just dropped him off. I got him a ride from the hood to the project. And you know, when he got out the car, I like asked him, I, gave, I showed him the gun, and I asked him, I, told, I said, you need it? It's something we always did, and he said, nah. And, and, and he went to his, his girl and my girl was friends at the time. So he went to his girl house, and, and my girl at the time came with me. And I was laying with her in, in the house, just chilling, and, and I got a call from his girl. This is what I'm talking about. It's like, it, I don't have a problem with you. I mean, it's, it's like real kind of fucked up because certain people wouldn't need to ask me how to fuck the, you know what I'm saying? Yo, people should know that shit. And, and, it, and if you don't know that, then I don't know. I can't explain it because I don't want to offend you or nothing. I'm going to just say that shit for another interview. But I felt bad, man. I felt bad. I felt bad. I felt like I wanted to die. It's like, yo, 
we were supposed to die. Like, you don't know what the fuck we spoke about. It's like, nigga, we were supposed to die for Pac. Like, we were supposed to die before Pac. And me, I feel the worst because then my little homie died right after this shit. Like, come on, man. Like, I felt like, yo, I felt like suicidal. Like, I don't even know how I'm alive today. That shit affected me in the worst fucking way. Like, I couldn't even put music together. I couldn't do nothing, bro. That shit killed me. And I just, you know, shit get tense when niggas start asking real questions. Yeah, it was tension. Well, niggas was riding, like, not me and Napoleon personally, because he was in Cali or whatever doing, doing the rap, whatever he was doing. But me, nigga, I was in the hood. And I was riding, and I was trying to kill a nigga. Because niggas killed Gaddafi. I didn't want to kill nobody that knew. I wanted to, I wanted to do one person that did it. And that shit fucked my life up. It had me, it had me off course, bro. It had me off course to the point where that shit took me years. Like, it took jail time. It took years, like, for me to get back right in my head over that shit. Like, yeah, we had problems. But he was there, and I was in Jersey, like, looking for people that, you know, possibly had something to do with that shit or trying to hurt the next person that I know he had love for or, you know, just doing real live shit because, yo, we talked about this, man. This nigga died. Nigga, you going to ride or what? He put the shit together. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And I don't know what the niggas was thinking. To me, I love all the niggas because of the bond we shared. Nobody else could share, but... Right is fucking right, and wrong is fucking wrong, and I don't know how niggas felt. I just know how I felt. Valentino giving me suits, gangster suits. It was in the backseat of a black BMW, part of an informal convoy of 10 cars, when Las Vegas police say shots were fired from a passing white Cadillac. Yesterday, the Reverend Jesse Jackson arrived and said a prayer at Shakur's bedside. We've been informed that doctors have told the family members that they expect the rap star to once again recover from it. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't, it didn't feel right to me. Because shit, what are we doing two five shows for? If that's all people were calling us to do shows for, then nigga, we ain't doing yeah. what the fuck. We ain't doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If every time somebody talks to us, they still talk, they asking us about the homie. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which is no disrespect to him. You know what I mean? Anybody knows? Okay. No, I ain't, you know this is just real nigga shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We ain't on our job. If every time we talking, we talking about him. That means he left us something that we still didn't fulfill. We didn't complete the mission. You know what I'm saying? So we going on every tour. It's a two-pack tribute tour. You know what I'm saying? And, and where's the tribute? You know what I'm saying? We run around saying Pac and Yaka live on. What does that mean? You know right. what I'm saying? Like I said, when it stops making sense to me, it don't make sense. So what does that mean? Pac and Yaka live on. What are we doing to really... You know, to this day, I, 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 I feel like I have some redeeming to do because I don't... I don't, I don't uh, have a relationship with Yaki's mother or his two children. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's the fuck nigga in me that don't have that relationship like I'm supposed to. You know right. what I'm saying? So if I'm saying Yak live on, Pac live on, like what am I? Is, is what am I doing? So you know, besides doing these fucking shows where it's benefiting me. So right. everything that that I'm in it for, everything that I'm saying I'm doing is to benefit nobody but me. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And I, I ain't with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, like, that ain't my style. Like, that ain't what I'm, I ain't, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I don't use people. You know what I'm saying? I don't use people and I don't, and, and when I say, I'm talking about me. So, and no nobody needs to be getting offended or none of that shit. This is me. Uh, you ain't in the group no more, whatever, whatever. First, let me nip that at the bud first. That rap group shit, that shit corny as shit to me. Like, I was never in no fucking rap group. You right, know what I'm right. saying? So, we can chill at right there, you know what I'm saying? Fuck a rap group. That's the rappers in <laughs> Run DMC and them niggas, you know what I'm saying? This outlaw shit with some whole with some whole other shit. You feel me? Right, so, right. Just to kill at, you know what I'm saying? But for the people who care, you know what I'm saying, for the people who it matters to, you know, the reason why I, I stopped you know, people stopped seeing me is because I felt like that what I was doing personally, I wasn't doing anything to advance the uh the gift that was given to me, you know what I'm saying? Right. This gift, this gift, as far as with this, uh, this blessing that Pac blessed us with, it wasn't. We wasn't doing it no justice. I say we, that includes me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We wasn't doing no justice. I felt like we was taking more from it than we was giving back to it. You know what right. I'm saying? And I will explain. I'm gonna go further into detail in explaining why I say this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you know, first let me start by saying. When 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 the brother passed, you know, we was all kind of young, you know what I mean? We we 
you know, it sounds like an excuse, but we probably wasn't ready for the responsibility of what it all entails. So we kind of right. was learning on the job, you know what I'm saying? So that gives us, you know, three years, tops. Mm-hmm. All right, three years came, we should have knew certain shit not to do. Now it's 15, 16, 28,000 years later, you know what I'm saying? No I just feel like it was the same shit, you know what I mean? I'm, and I'm a pretty smart dude, so after a while when shit don't make sense to me, I have to be like, all right, cool, you know what I'm saying? And this ain't no shot to nobody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody mm-hmm. do what the fuck they want to do, you know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't mad at nobody, you feel me? But at yep. the same time, I feel like I got to get it out. It's a lot of shit I want to say so people can be very clear on what I'm saying and mm-hmm. don't get it misconstrued, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I stopped going on shows. I stopped doing shows maybe five years ago, you could say. I stopped going, you know, but I've been wanting to stop shit maybe seven years, you know what I mean? Because we was doing shows, and all we were performing was Hail Mary and all the pop songs. It was right, all cool, right. but I'm like, shit, nigga, we got songs too. We should be performing our shit. Let's mm-hmm. do these shits, you know what I mean? That shit didn't go over well. Now, with, with that said, a, a fault of mine is I should have took more of a leadership role, you know what I'm saying, because I believe my intentions are pure. You know what I'm right. saying? I have pure intentions. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have no, you know, money, money is not my motivator. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not, especially with this shit. It was never, money was never my motivator. So mm-hmm. I should have took more of a leadership role and drove the car more than I did. You know, I kind of fell back and let everybody else do it. And then I just chipped in. And then to top it off, I was a heavy drinker. So I was yeah. in a fucking cloud for a lot of the time. You know what I'm saying? Today actually right. is the year that I quit drinking today, exactly today. Hey, congratulations, so, uh, bro. You know Congrats. All so, the time. All right, cool. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. But, yeah, so um, so with that, I stopped doing the shit. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, we making these songs. You know, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really digging the direction the shit was going in. Like I said, I should have took more of a leadership role in it. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't right. digging it. I just feel like we was pushing the right, the right, we wasn't pushing the right message. You know, that we kind of, at certain, certain, Certain songs, we didn't know what we wanted to do. You know what I mean? It seems like at times we was listening to the radio and we was trying to compete with people that we shouldn't be trying to compete with. Like, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. We above and beyond that shit. So I think that at some point with people trying to see this shit, you know, this shit is not business for me. You know what I'm saying? This shit is, this shit always was never business for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Never. From mm-hmm. Dick Ola. You know what I'm saying? This shit was always personal. It was like a responsibility for me. So I right. never. I never approached anything for the sake of a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Because dollars come and they go. You know, anybody that know me know if I got it, I'm going to spend it. If I got it, it's yours. You know, it's our money. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It ain't about me. It's about us. So, you know, I, didn't, I, I, I wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? And then every tour we went on, every tour we went on was a Tupac tribute tour. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like fucking 10 years later, what are we, now what are we doing? If this, right. if this a tribute tour, what, where's the tribute coming in? We go on and we sing his songs. I felt like a, a fucking cover band. We go sing his songs. We get paid and we go home and spend the money on, on, on whatever we spend the money on. You know what I'm saying? So that was an uncomfortable thing for me. You know what I'm saying? And I rode with it longer than I should have. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't. It didn't feel right to me. Because this is what I'm talking about. It's like it, I don't have a problem with you. I mean, it's, it's like real kind of fucked up because certain people wouldn't need to ask me how the fuck to. You know what I'm saying? Yo, people should know that shit, and and, it, and if you don't know that, then I don't know. I can't explain it because I don't want to offend you or nothing. I'm going to just say that shit for another interview, but I felt bad, man. I felt bad. Uh, Valentino giving me shoes, gang. Well, my cousin, um, I introduced Gaddafi to my cousin. I introduced them together, and they became friends. They, had, they started building their own relationship even without me, you know? Um, at that particular time, it was known in New Jersey where a lot of youngsters was getting high off of pills. I'm not sure what type of pills they was taking, but they, everyone was dumping pills, you understand? My little cousin Roddy, he also never would leave, he always had a gun on him, you know what I mean? And imagine an individual who's not in his right mind, he probably was 13, 14, 15 years old, always high, playing with a gun, you know? He, he, he said that he was playing with the gun, pointed it in the face of Gaddafi and the gun accidentally went I think. Gaddafi died in November, if I'm not mistaken. October, November I left. 10th, yeah. October, I went to Atlanta. 
And I told Gaddafi before I left, we need to get out of there. I think I got arrested and I, I seen myself getting into some trouble. So I told Gaddafi, man, we need to get out. a lot of a lot of this stuff that Gaddafi did that I ain't really saying. I'm not gonna say now. No, you, you that know, he, he, we ain't gotta, you know what I mean. That he was he was like, man, I saw him putting in some work. <laughs> and I was like, Gaddafi, was we need to leave. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he's like, no problem. Go to Atlanta. I'm going to meet you down there. I went. I got out of Jersey because Jersey, it was a very bad, tough situation. But before I left, I introduced Gaddafi to my little cousin. Gaddafi and my cousin, they used to like to pop pills. You know what I mean? This was a time where the youngsters in Jersey used to get high by popping pills. So they automatically clicked because they had something in common. Me, the only thing I used to do back then was drink. I wasn't into anything else. So they would hang all day, pop their pills, do what they had to do, and they was kicking it with each other. So it wasn't like my cousin took a gun to go to Gaddafi house and to kill him. He always had a weapon on him. And not only that, my cousin told me they was playing. My, my friend Kaz had Gaddafi in a headlock. And my cousin pointed the gun at his face and it accidentally went off. That's enough. I don't see how an individual would shoot a gun while his friend is behind him holding him purposely. You understand? So when I spoke to my little cousin, I went to Jersey. And I spoke to my little cousin what happened. He told me it was an accident. Um, my grandfather met. I didn't even know the set told me when I seen set a few years ago that even before I met with my cousin, my grandfather met in a hotel with set with Gaddafi moms. Um, I don't know if Faye was there, but with Gaddafi family was set and all of them was there. My grandfather was like, what do you want us to do with him? You understand? My grandfather said the same thing to setting them. They said, well, we want him. Yacht mother, Gaddafi mother said, well, we want him to turn himself in. And my grandfather said, well, at least give him one day to spend time with his kids, but I promise he would be in jail. So not only was myself telling him, man, just turn yourself in, my family was, wasn't was backing that. My family was supporting him to go turn yourself in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mo, when we found out Gaddafi had got shot, uh, we was at um, a family's house. We was on the, floor, on the floor asleep. I get the call from um, one of the homegirls that's was a friend of Gaddafi's girl at the time, you know what I mean, and telling us. So immediately, you know, we knew what happened. She, she said he did it, they came to the house, they was in the hallway, and it was just like, you know, it was it was just hard to believe the whole accident thing, because, you know, when, when it happened, you know, there was kids, they ran off, you know, and left. So when the girls opened, the, heard the shot and opened the door, you know, he was just, he was there, you know what I mean? Like my little cousin said, we was kids. He right. said, when, I, when we shot him, that's, I didn't know what to do. That's the first time no, I ever shot somebody. No, of course they run. No doubt. So no he doubt. panicked and ran. You know what I mean? Immediately, right? though, when yeah. we get on the phone, you know, I'm like, who did it all this? You know, like Napoleon Cousin. It was just, it was crazy. He get on the phone immediately, like the same, probably the same day, he wound up getting in touch with his cousin and immediately was telling him to turn himself in. Yeah. It was yeah, just I went like, to Jersey. No, I remember you. I remember you actually got on the phone with him too, though, at the house. Yeah, you probably don't remember, bro. You know, we just talking about that. No, he used to drink every day, man. A lot of stuff. The Hennessy, man, stealing some memories from me. Since we just back, been back connected, we talking about a lot of different things. He's like, I can't remember the Hennessy, but I remember that. I remember he wound up talking to his cousin when we was at the house on the phone. Yeah. And you know, you was telling him to turn himself in, but that scenario was like. um it was the worst case scenario. It was a nightmare. Ever was, you could think about. You got to think. He loved Gaddafi. Gaddafi was, um, w was, was my family as well. He was, you know, and it split us up. That's when Fatal left the group. Fatal called. He wanted to beef with uh, him. Fatal was looking for it, his cousin. It, it was difficult. It was like, it, it definitely you know what I mean, was, uh, like that period yeah. was the worst ever. But you know, um, rest in peace, yeah. Gaddafi, man. That's our brother, man. And and, and it was it, even his cousin. He was kids. He had to go. He got locked up. How long he did? It's like yeah, eight, eight, nine years, years man. Years. It was like right. so the it worst was, case scenario like, ever. Huh? Manslaughter, I guess. I think manslaughter. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Well, Gaddafi had two girls pregnant at the time. Yeah. He got two daughters that was born. He didn't even know it he was had. A sad situation. It was definitely. like yeah. the worst scenario you could ever think of, man. And even you know from I mean? his mother, like, see, there's a lot of things that can make it point that can even put me in the situation from the outside looking in to where people would question. Where was my loyalty? You know, one, Gaddafi is my brother, literally. Like, I knew Gaddafi since I was seven, eight years old, so I feel he was my brother. My cousin Roddy, we was raised as brothers, you understand? So for me, at that particular time, I'm looking, how can we defuse this situation? Because it pretty much was going to be a war. You know, people from yep. Gaddafi hood, people from my hood. When I went back home, I seen everybody striping up people yeah. from Gaddafi hood. 
calling my grandmother house. And I'm threatening from Gaddafi us. hood. You like, know what they I mean? was looking for his cousin at the time. And All the homies. It yeah, was, and it, it was, was gonna going to go. Down. It, it could have went down. It you was know? going so down, man. I was going to go to the funeral, and Gaddafi mother, um, she called one day. Was like, "Don't go to the funeral. I think it's going to be problems." Right. But me, it's hurting because this is my friend and, right. and the coach. If you don't go to the funeral. That's going to, my cousin did it. Then I don't show up to the funeral. It's going to even look worse. One of my problems. homies, this is when I, this when I came, at first I was going to go. But this one I decided not to go when one of my friends said, no, we're going to go to the funeral. Anybody say something to you, we're going to pull out the gun and walk on my side. And I'm like, how can I have this, <laughs> yeah, this right, ignorant yeah. stuff literally at the funeral of my homie? Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm going to sit back. And then that even came, oh, you didn't come to the funeral, you did it is. But I, crazy, my intentions, man. and I know the reason why I didn't go, but it, the whole situation was terrible. It was a, it was I'm, a great I'm glad decision. That yeah. I did it. It, it, was, it was a good decision. That something would have definitely happened, but yeah. that whole scenario, man, it was it was just, it was it was devastating it was sad, for everybody, yeah. man. Even to this day, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just talking about it. It's, yeah. it's just, you know, I mean, it's like at the end of the day, you know, um, it was Napoleon's cousin. He, he, he talked to him. It was like it's an accident, but it's like, you know, Gaddafi mom and you know his family and you know uh, it's like nobody was we wasn't if you're not there to see it you know what I'm saying to say oh this was actually an accident you know, only God knows somebody's intentions in their heart you know what I'm saying so yeah. it was just like it was just but crazy me knowing man. my cousin right <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to say he did it no man. I'm not trying to say that <laughs> I'm not trying to say he did it on purpose I'm saying that yeah, at the I, end I of the day it. Let him tell his side because exactly. nobody ever exactly. heard him come and, out and, and say, look, This is my intention. Perspective, yeah, he didn't do it, you know what I'm saying? We loved Moo, we loved his brothers, period. We had accepted them as family, so it wasn't like we was gonna put him out on the street like that. Family nah. always had love, it always, you know what and, I mean? and let's be clear, people were trying to get us to turn on him absolutely. at this time yeah. on a daily you know basis, saying? like absolutely. it was that crazy. No, was like, y'all mom was like, very upset, you know what I'm saying? It was a bad situation, she still felt like because this is a woman that was a part of the family for years, you know what I'm saying? And was friends with all of our mothers, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and it was almost like, I always say she's almost responsible for him being in the group. She is. Because yeah. she was the one that came to Pac and told Pac his story. And he used to tell us about him. And he'd be like, he raps too. Y'all, he would be perfect for the group. <laughs> yeah. You know she what I mean? She was on her A&R shit. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, she was my language. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yasmin yeah. was on her A&R. Get it like, yo, yeah. he, he would be perfect for the group. Because at the Real time, tough. you know, we was learning. Pac was form form formulating the group. It was me, K, and Gaddafi. And, you know, teaching us how to get in the studio and make songs. And, you know, he came right at that pivotal point where it was like, yo, y'all got to put up a shut up. You know what I mean? Pac was on us like, yo, if y'all don't start yeah. coming up with a little bit more than what y'all coming up with, man, y'all can go, you know, go to school or, you know, figure out your life. But I need y'all to put up a shut up. And Moo came to the group and, and it was like glue when he came to the group. You know what I'm saying? He fit perfectly. I yeah. still remember when he came to the group. Nah, it was, you know it was, what I mean? He definitely was responsible. Not Absolutely. saying that, no, you saying right, he did it, but everybody have their emotions in this situation all over because this, he knew Gaddafi his whole life, Gaddafi his cousin, his mother brought me around. So people angry and emotions are everywhere, which you cannot, you cannot um, just throw aside of the, what other people feel. Right. You understand? Everybody entitled to their own opinion, to their own feelings. I respect that. Yep. But me as an individual who know my cousin, I know my cousin, he's not going to just go kill someone for no reason. You understand? And for me, the love that I have for Gaddafi and the love that I have for my cousin... I'm glad that he turned himself in, and I'm glad that he manned it up and turned himself in. And knowing my cousin, especially back then, where a lot of people in our neighborhoods, we know coming from the street, people love to brag because they give them macho credit. Right. To say, yeah, I did it, what? He could have came home after nine years and got stripes. But even to this day, no matter what, he say, no, it was an accident. He never went back on his word. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I do think it's a good idea to let him to um, interview him, but can I say something else? Which another thing that taught me the value of real friendship and family, because you gotta understand when my cousin killed Gaddafi, I was around all Gaddafi family as well, not only friends, but family. Um, Pac Moms is his aunt, his mother, I'm in the house alone, but they showed me the most, they showed me character. You understand? Because no one flipped on me. Even when people were saying things, move this, these brothers, they was taking up for me, the family was taking up for me. It showed me a side that I never seen that side of the ghetto life. Because <laughs> if it was my family, it'd probably you know what been it was, crazy. Mo, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. um, 
you know, you wasn't responsible for that. You know what I mean? Like, but when, you know, coming from the hood. Nah, without a doubt. You know I mean? Without a doubt. Nah, without a, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt is is yeah. immediately. You know what? For sure. If we can't get the the person who did it, it's it's yeah. the family. You know how it yeah, goes. That's you know how what the mean? ignorance is. But at the end of the day, when we got the call, this man was on the floor asleep right next to me. You know what I mean? It, it, it's sure. like I can't turn on him. He didn't do it. He right here. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's, 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 trust me, I was getting pressure from all the homies, fatal A body. Like, it's like, yo, this man, you can't hold this man responsible. It's like if my brother, you know, out sniffing all going crazy and do something, y'all gonna blame me for it? You know what I mean? It's like in my heart. I, it, that just wasn't the thing to do. He didn't have nothing to do with that, man. You know what I mean? Right. And he turned his, this, 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 had his cousin turn himself yeah. in. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, Come on, man. We all hurting. This he loved Gaddafi, man. It's a lose you know I mean? lose situation. Yeah. Nobody wins. Like, lose, even lose, if we would have turned our back on on him, that that would that wouldn't have been a victory for us. You know what I mean? That'd have just been more pain and more hurt and you know what I mean? More funerals. This you know was what I'm two months after Pac died, yeah, man. Was, we was yeah, all crazy. Bro, we was yeah. all going crazy. Bro. Up. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about this was two months. Pac died September 13th. Gaddafi died November 10th, man. Yeah, it was crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, my cousin, um, I introduced Gaddafi to my cousin. I introduced them together, and they became friends. They had, they started building their own relationship even without me. You know, um, at that particular time, it was known in New Jersey where a lot of youngsters was getting high off of pills. I'm not sure what type of pills they was taking, but they, everyone was dumping pills. You understand? My little cousin Roddy, he also never would. Leave, he always had a gun on him. You know what I mean? And imagine an individual who's not in his right mind. He probably was 13, 14, 15 years old, always high, playing with a gun. You know, he, he, he said that he was playing with the gun, pointed it in the face of Gaddafi, and the gun accidentally went off. You understand? So it was definitely was a sad situation because Gaddafi, he was like a best friend of mine. You know, Gaddafi was the one who introduced me to Tupac. He was my childhood friend. So when that happened, man, it was wow. That's the one thing that it was a test that I wasn't prepared for. You know, we get a phone call from um, I was actually in Tupac mother house at this particular time. I wasn't even in New Jersey. I just left New Jersey and I get a phone call. I forget who called. Castro came in the room and said Gaddafi got shot. And I'm like, what? But I'm not thinking it's, you know, detrimental or anything that's, you know, that bad. I'm just thinking he got shot. We always say homies getting shot. And then he came back in the room, was like, he's in a, pretty much like a coma. He got shot. And I'm like, who done it? And he said, it, another call came in and Castro came in the room. was like, man, he said, your cousin Roddy did it. Man, it felt like a, a brick hit my chest. I just started crying like, damn, man, I can't believe it's my cousin and it's Gaddafi. I wasn't prepared to be in, in a situation like that, you know? And I was only, what, 17, 18 years old at that time. I talked to him at first. I couldn't get him on the phone because he was hiding out. He, he, he was hiding out, you know? So for me, it was an odd situation because I'm in the house of Tupac mother, who was like a, 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 a aunt to Gaddafi. This is Tupac, this Gaddafi family. So I'm in a house, I'm paranoid because I'm like, my cousin killed their family member. How are they gonna treat me? And that family is amazing because they never switch sides. They always treat, you know what I mean? They pop moms and his sister and, and, and Castro, they always treated me the same way before that happened. And I'm not, I wasn't used to that because I come from a family. I don't know how my family would have treated an individual that killed my little cousin. Remember, so I was shocked, you know what I mean? So eventually I went to New Jersey. I flew to New Jersey. And even people from my hood wasn't letting me know where my cousin was. It was like they was hiding him out. My brother and them was like, we don't know where he at. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's strange. Nobody know where he at, you know what I mean? Right. So eventually he was in the projects. He was hiding out in the projects and I was able to go see him. So he was in the staircase in the project. I'm like, man, what happened? And he, I remember, I think he was eating on some sunflower seeds or something, but his face looked numb, you know? He was like, it was an accident. I said, okay, if it's an accident, man, turn yourself in then. You know what I mean? And for me saying that in front of my whole block, Everybody gun, everybody got guns, everybody got weapons. They all drug dealers and murderers and street cats. And they looking at me like, turn this stuff in. We, we don't do that over here. But I'm like, look, man, Gaddafi, this, you know, I, I don't want to harm my little cousin. And I know if he would have stayed on the streets, ain't no telling what would have happened. And I just want to see some type of retribution. Like, you got to, you saying it's an accident, then let, to turn yourself in. You know what I mean? Eventually, he turned himself in. And he did about seven, eight years in prison. But I didn't know the other day I was with Tupac's sister, maybe at Mo Premium House four or five days ago. 
And she actually told me that that it was a meeting that my grandfather even went to the, to met with Gaddafi mother, Tupac's sister, and all of them in a the hotel. And my grandfather's like, what do you want us to do with him, you know? And they was like, we want him to turn himself in. My grandfather's like, can you give him at least one day to be with his child? I think my cousin had a daughter. And he's like, I promise I would take him to the prison, you know? So he went and turned himself in prison. Yeah. I'm, I think it might have been a plea bargain, man. Unfortunately, I'm not, I, re I really, I wasn't too familiar with what was happening with the trial and stuff it like that. It sounded like it, you know, my cousin told me it was an accident. I never really, you know, because it was hard for me. I never sat down with him really and besides that day and talked to him about it, you know what I mean? And since he'd been home and the times I've been around him, I never brung it up again. You understand? I couldn't, I just really want to, I want to accept it as an accident, you know, because I don't want to, I, I don't want to think, you know, something intentionally happened to Gaddafi, you know? Uh, Valentino giving me suits, gangsters. Is, uh, is correct. I filed, I think, two or three weeks ago with respect to, to this appeal. You both have... They want to put me in jail for something I did a long time ago, and I can't really blame them because I was, a, a, you know, kind of a bad person before. But now I'm trying to do something with my life, and they won't let me. I can't do nothing in jail. They keep trying to shove me in jail. They talking about how overcrowded it is, but yet they still trying to shove me in there. So you trying to be the positive side? That's all. Everything is good. It's all good. I'm sorry. I love you. That's all right. Got anything to say? What are you supposed to do? And we appreciate it.